Tonight on CFTK TV, terrorist citizens will need to be aware of their water usage during firefighting season. Canada continues to put on a show at Copa America, and a Mars simulation saw people isolate for 378 days. Northwest BC's only television news team. We are CFTK TV News. Good evening, I'm Damien Smith, and you're watching CFTK TV. As of today, the city of Terrace has implemented additional restrictions on water use. Terrace sees stage three water restrictions come into place to ensure adequate water supply is available for firefighting purposes during forest firefighting season. Full restrictions include no sprinkling and watering of non-sport green spaces within the city. The permissions include watering with a hose for plants and flowers, as well as just hot tub or pool top-ups. If you happen to have a new house with first-time lawn of seed or turf, you can apply for a permit. If caught causing any of these restrictions, fines may be warranted. Vancouver citizens are just getting over the hottest weekend yet this summer, and as a heat warning was issued last week and is expected to be lifted Tuesday night. CTV's Martin McMahon has the latest. I'm going to head out and get myself some of those emergency blankets because my bedroom faces south. And I've heard that if you put those up uh, in your window that the temperature drops quite a bit. People all around Vancouver are trying to figure out how to beat the heat. Yeah, I'll go down to the beach like everybody. It's full. Yeah. She loves sunbathing, but I always spray her down with the hose. She loves the water. so Hydrate avoid the hottest parts of the day. And if you don't have air conditioning, it's really a great time to use the facilities, public and private, that have air conditioning available just to get respite from that heat. And for anybody working in the heat for extended periods of time, WorkSafe BC is reminding everyone on a work site to have a plan. Air conditioning and ventilation indoors, uh, cooling uh, stations, as I said, with water, and ample water right at the start of the day. That's really a key consideration, about a glass every 20 minutes or so when we're working outside. And for seniors and other vulnerable people, including those who live on the street, groups such as the Union Gospel Mission will be out offering support, including on the downtown east side. And what we know during these times of heat is that there are certain populations that are more vulnerable to it, and what we don't want to see are people getting sick with heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and even dying because of these hot temperatures. The SPCA is also asking people with pets to be diligent. Please do not exercise your dogs during the day. It's best to take them for a walk in the morning or later in the evening. And you can actually test the sidewalk. If you place your, the back of your hand on the sidewalk for a couple of minutes and you find it's too hot, then it's too hot for your dog's uh, paw pads. And if you've been wondering about the BC government's free air conditioner program, BC Hydro reports it has installed 11,000 units since the program began last summer. Martin McMahon, CTV News, Vancouver. Just today, the BC Northern Real Estate Board through MLS has released their half-year report with details on the Northwest region. Prince Rupert has sold 82 properties so far this year, compared to 79 in the last year's first six months. The homes sold this year have equaled to a total of $32.4 million. In Kitimat, 94 properties have been sold worth $34.1 million compared to 92 properties worth $54.2 million at this time last year. In Terrace, the area sold 135 properties worth a total of $59.7 million compared to 146 properties worth $64 million in the same period last year. As of today, there are 154 properties available for purchase in Prince Rupert, 146 in Kinemat, and 174 in Terrace. To many, the round robin was a success for Team Canada in Copa America by making the final eight, but in a, a quarter-final win over Venezuela in penalty kicks on Friday, the nation celebrated countrywide. Camille Caramali has more on how Canada is earning the respect that it's strived for. A salsa festival here in Toronto has given soccer fans a lot more to dance about now that Canada has made it to the semi-finals of South America's premier soccer tournament. 
Canadian soccer fans celebrating another historic win at the Copa America tournament where Canada is a participant for the first time in its history and blowing away all expectations. They already made history by making it to the quarterfinals, facing off against Venezuela. But after a 1-1 draw heading into the penalty shootout, Canada was able to come out on top. Fans celebrating Canada surpassing all expectations, knowing this latest win will launch them into having a more respectable reputation on the world stage. This is just sort of enhances their growing reputation. I think going forward, you're going to see more nations want to play against Canada in like a range of international friendlies and whatnot because they want to test themselves against quality opposition. And you know, you couldn't have said that five or ten years ago. No one wanted to play Canada. Now from the unexpected to the near impossible, Canada will have to face World Cup champions Argentina on Tuesday. Canada coming in as the underdogs, which means all the pressure is on Argentina to win. Kamal Karamali, CTV News, Toronto. Coming up next, how a mother and daughter in Victoria continue to push each other to be their best. For decades, a Victorian mother advocated for her daughter with cerebral palsy. Now that daughter is inspiring her mother, who discovered an unexpected talent for painting. Adam Sawatsky from CTV is more. To appreciate how Charlotte Friend ended up painting unexpectedly, I had picked up a paintbrush out of sheer boredom. We need to go back to when she began raising her baby girl, Becca, optimistically. She was awesome, and it was number two, and I knew what I was doing, I thought. Until Becca's struggles with walking led to her being diagnosed with a mild form of cerebral palsy, which felt devastating. And I wasn't sure that we, as parents, would be equal to the task or what her future would look like. But despite Becca's brain processing uniquely, despite the right side of her body moving differently, Charlotte and her husband were committed to help their daughter become the best she could be. Thankfully, we had a really determined redhead. You don't mess with a redhead. Charlotte encouraged Becca to face the kids who bullied her for wearing patches and braces with bravery and attempt everything she wanted to do in and out of the classroom with determination. You might not be able to do things quite as the other kids do, but you can find your own ways of doing things. And Becca did. Graduating from high school after starring in student plays, earning a university degree before landing a good job, and recently marrying the love of her life. And I wasn't worried about her in life because I knew she could handle anything. Which brings us to when Charlotte started painting during the pandemic despite never having done anything artistic in her life before. And eventually Rebecca said to me, Mom, you have something. And I said, no, I don't. But Becca persevered on her behalf, found a venue for Charlotte to display her work, and her mom sold her first few paintings. I think I've taught my mom to just have faith in yourself. She taught me that and I kind of give it back to her. <laughs> and now Charlotte is a prolific painter, spending her retirement relishing being a professional artist. But having somebody in your corner saying, you can do this, you know you've got this, is just tremendous. Like Charlotte was once her daughter's biggest advocate, Becca is now her mom's greatest champion. As she tells me, mom, I am so proud of you. And that just, I mean, it makes your heart sing. Adam Sawatsky, CTV News, Victoria. Just down south in the United States, wildfires continue to destruct in the west. However, conditions in Northern Carolina has tempered a bit and firefighters are doing everything they can at the moment. Garj Balsanga from ABC News has more. Fire activity has calmed considerably compared to when we first arrived. And this is the first time fire crews have been able to sit in one spot and catch their breath as the pay fire gave them one challenge after another. Large flames prompting evacuations and heavy air attack. All hands were on deck for the pay fire as it burned in the paved dirt road near Placerville Airport, just southeast of the city of Placerville. The high temperatures, low humidity is a big challenge for our crews on the ground. Cal Fire says the flames moved at a dangerous rate east towards the airport and then there was plenty of fuel left to burn. The majority of this fire is grass oak woodland with some brush in it and a lot of structures here. According to firefighters, multiple structures at one time were threatened 
and some airplane hangars may have been involved in the fire. The extreme heat, very difficult for fire crews, but another challenge they face is that typography, very steep terrain, which makes it hard for fire crews to get up there and fight the fire and makes it for the fire very easy to run. The air resource for a big help. But that was not the only challenge. Some embers traveling a quarter of a mile ahead of the main fire. And you can see significant ember wash that's contributed to short range spotting on the right shoulder. We had some spot fires over toward Texas Hill Road area. Those were our priorities. Very thankful for a firefighter. The fire coming near Ben Parsons' home on Duden Drive, but the quick thinking of his friend may have kept the flames at bay. I wasn't here, but uh, our neighbor Jimmy here was, and he ran down and cut the pool and got the water out and made sure that held the fire back for a little bit uh, while the firefighters came up here. No word yet on if the fire destroyed or damaged any homes or structures. Reporting in El Dorado County near Placerville Airport. Garch Paul Sunga, ABC 10. Now on to today's weather forecast. The coast will see a high of 18 degrees with sunny conditions and the clear conditions will continue into the 10 degree night until fog patches arrive in the morning. The Terrace and Kinemat area continues to have sweltering conditions as the heat warning continues at 32 degrees today. The clouds will come back a little bit this evening with a low of 16 degrees. And finally, in the Bulkley Valley and Lakes District, it has similar conditions at 33 degrees with very clear skies. Unlike Terrace and Kinemat, there will be no clouds tonight, however, and the low will be 6 degrees. Now on to this week's forecast. The coast will see one more day of sun until the clouds take over for the rest of the week. It will stay right around 15 degrees throughout the week with some rainy conditions. At night, a low of 12, which will be on Wednesday and Thursday. In the Terrace Kitimat area, it will see one more hot day at 30 degrees until their mixed forecast arrives for the week. The light rain will be there on Wednesday and Thursday, followed by sun and clouds on Friday and Saturday, but then it will be back to a 60% chance of showers on Sunday. And in the Bulky Valley and Lakes District, it will have one more day of hot weather at 32 degrees, followed by, followed by a cool down on Wednesday with a 60% chance of showers. The sun will come back on Thursday with some clouds on the weekend. Now let's take a look at our Northwest Road Report. On Highway 16, there is road maintenance work between Susquehanna Forest Service Road and Station Road West. Starting Wednesday at 7.30 a.m., there will be construction work planned between Lucerne Campground Access Road and Boundary Road. On Highway 37, there is seal coating between Stikeen Bridge and Williams Road. There is also frost tees between Dees River Bridge and the end of Highway 37. Highway 37A sees mowing between 19th Ave and Highway 37 Junction. And this is what the roads were looking like this afternoon around the northwest from the view of the province's highway cams. Still to come, how NASA is one step closer to putting people onto Mars. Well, NASA has made its journey to Mars one step closer after a year-long simulation that left astronauts in a Mars-like setting. 378 days was the length of their tenure. Let's see what CTV's Christina Tanaglia has on the story. Ready to come out? The crew of four emerged after 378 days in confinement. It felt like an out of this world mission, but this team never left the ground. It's actually just so wonderful to be able to say hello to you all. Hello from Earth, as this was a mission to Mars simulation, a NASA first. You know, wow, that went by quickly. The quartet of volunteer crew members spent more than a year in this 3D printed, 17,000 square foot facility about the size of a hockey rink. It's an elaborate makeshift Mars environment at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. And I really hope this helps us get that much closer to the reality of putting boots on Mars. That reality means working out some challenges. There's a lot of different problems to solve and the only way to start solving them 
is through good simulation. Retired astronaut and Colonel Chris Hadfield was the first Canadian to walk in space. So if you're going to stay on Mars for extended periods, then you have to rethink how you do everything. Where does your food come from? What do you do when things break? And that's what this crew did. Carrying out experiments, growing vegetables, conducting simulated Mars walks, and gathering data that will help the space agency to prepare to return to the moon and Mars. NASA's last successful mission was the Perseverance rover. It landed on Mars surface in February 2021. But humans have never touched the red planet. Why go to Mars? Because it's possible. And we'll sort of go when the technology gets good enough to make it reasonably safe. A little subset of us pushing the very edge of what's possible. That's always been what has turned history. As for the simulated missions on Earth, NASA plans to carry out two more. And the space agency hopes for the real deal to send astronauts to Mars in the early 2030s. The Calgary Stampede got underway this weekend with people visiting from all over the world to this popular tourist hub. Here's CTV's Tyler Vera with a mid-stampede update. Give us a big Yahoo! 3, 2, 1! Yeah! It was family day at the Stampede and what better way to kick it off than with a nice breakfast together. We said let's take in the breakfast and the grandstand show and yes it was amazing. Volunteers were hoping to feed 20,000 people, serving approximately 40,000 pancakes. One of the families making their way down are the Stephnicians. This is their 14th year stampeding on Family Day. We really do enjoy it. We like that there's a lot of like accessibility for us, and yeah, it's really fun. Families had many entertainment options available to them. A favorite for the kids, seeing the animals. I like seeing all the I like seeing the animals because some of them are really cute. It was packed early on as kids enjoyed rides, games and sounds on the grounds. This family traveled from England and Texas for the stampede and enjoyed the free admission. We haven't had to buy admission. We have allowed the children to do more rides and we have been down the midway and my son has been trying to win a Pokemon. So it has been fantastic. It was hot on Sunday and the temperature is expected to be in the 30s until midweek. It will feel even hotter on the grounds, but the Stampede is prepared to help you beat the heat. We have um, misting stations, we have water refill stations, and our depth and breadth of programming allows for opportunities that our guests can spend both indoors and outdoors. All the animals have access to water and are vet checked regularly to ensure their safety. Tyler Barrow, CTV News, Calgary. Now we turn our attention to the stock market. The Canadian dollar has stayed at 73.35. The price of gold is down $34.20. Oil is down 83 cents. Natural gas is up 5 cents. Aluminum is up $13. In Toronto, the TSX is up 67.1. The Venture Index is down 7.7. .7. In New York, the Dow Jones is down 31.08. And NASDAQ is up 50.98. Still ahead, a sudden shift in the France election as the country is headed towards a balanced parliament. As Prime Minister Trudeau makes his way to the NATO summit in Washington, D.C., he's being criticized from members of the alliance due to budgetary underpayments. CTV's Judy Trin in Washington has the details. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is facing pressure from allies to spend at least 2% of the national budget on defense each year. But Canada has yet to present a plan to get there. With an economy the size of ours, the expenditures that are required to get to where we need to be take time. In recent months, Canada has been called out by NATO Secretary General and a prominent group of U.S. Senators. 23 of 32 NATO countries will meet their commitments. Currently, Canada contributes 1.37% of GDP. By 2030, it will go up to 1.76%, still far off the mark. Not meeting the target without having a plan in place and a date to meet the target shows that you're not taking the target as seriously as almost all of the other allies. While we fall short on defense spending, 
Government officials say we punch above our weight when it comes to Ukraine. Since the Russian invasion in 2022, Canada has provided Ukraine with $4 billion in military support for weapons, ammunition and training. There are allies in NATO who are meeting 2% who do not support standing up for Ukraine and Russia. But with President Biden under pressure to step down, the threat of another Donald Trump presidency looms large. Trump has threatened to pull out of NATO and has expressed admiration for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Analysts say even Canada's closest ally may not pull any punches at the summit. Especially what we've seen from the previous uh, Trump uh, administration. I, I think that that's going to place a lot of pressure on Mr. Biden to be strong and be seen being strong with Canada on the 2% issue. Trudeau is also under pressure domestically to deal with cost of living issues. To counter that, he's arranged meetings with American businessmen and congressional leaders to discuss trade opportunities, all the while balancing his commitments to NATO. There has been a surprise in France with an unexpected flip in the country's second round runoff election. The far right has fallen and the left has been launched into victory recently, which a switch up on opinion polls following the first round of votes. But no party has achieved a majority just yet and France is heading for a balanced parliament. CTV's Jeremy Chiron has more. A stunning outcome celebrated by young voters in Paris tonight. It could have been an historic French election and a pivotal turning point for the country, a projected far-right surge to send a message to President Emmanuel Macron. But instead, its new popular front, an alliance of left-leaning parties led by Jean-Luc Mélenchon, set to secure the most seats in France's National Assembly against expectations. Notre peuple. Our people have clearly rejected the worst-case scenario, said Mélenchon in his victory speech. Tonight, the national rally is far from having the absolute majority that was predicted, he said. A successful strategic effort by the centre and left in a second round vote that saw an unusually high turnout. You had a couple hundred candidates withdraw from uh, various constituencies, that whichever one had left with the best chance to defeat the far right candidate would have an unopposed shot. What is clear tonight is who will not be prime minister. The far-right national rally's Jordan Bardella plummeted from first place after the first round vote to third. Tonight, France sees itself deprived of a majority government to act and therefore a clear direction to fix France, said Bardella. Now, President Emmanuel Macron, whose centrist ensemble alliance captured the second most seats today, will be left with no clear path to choose a prime minister and a hung parliament without a majority. Now, Macron cannot call fresh elections until a year has elapsed after this one. So we could very well see a year where, uh, where France is in a position of political stalemate. Prime Minister Gabriel Attal says he will resign. The president says he'll wait before making a decision on a new government, but has vowed to respect the French people's choice. The snap election result is likely to gridlock France's National Assembly, install domestic policy, which will impact Macron's progress in the remaining three years of his presidency with a ripple effect beyond the country. That's all our news for now. I'm Damien Smith and you're watching CFTK-TV. Thanks for tuning in.